Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you've arrived at day 34 of the 100 Days of Zen Tangle 2020. We're officially in our second third. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day today to all of you moms and to all of you children who've been affected by ladies who have come into your lives and made them special whether those be your biological moms or your foster moms or your adoptive moms or your temporary moms or your stepmoms and i want to say especially a happy mother's day today to all of you moms who are stuck without your children to hug today put your arms around each other right now and know that you are not alone Okay, let's stop this soppy stuff and have some fun. What do you think? So I'm going to be completely self-indulgent today and show you my tangle called Marito. It is, <laughs> it is named after uh, a nickname for, I had for my little one. Uh, we were reading a series of books called Skippy John Jones, and uh, those books were... Uh, had a lot of Spanish in them, and we started, there were banditos and a lot of other things that rhymed with bandito, so <laughs> we etoed everything that year and had a lot of fun doing it, so this tangle is named Marito, after my little one. I designed this particularly because I, in that time, I was doing a whole lot of gems, and if you want to see the step out for this, this will be the only one we do in this 100-day challenge that does not have a step out at Tangle Patterns. The step out for this is on my website, uh, www.thetirelesstangler.com. And you can just look in the step outs in the menu. You can look at step outs and it'll be in there. Or you can do a search for Marito on the site and that should bring it up for you. All right, uh, there are, I designed this to go around gemstones, okay? It is basically a ribbon tangle, and it has a, a few similarities to the tangle we did, Cadibra, back, um, I don't know when. I have lost the ability to think that far. <laughs> okay, so excuse that, we're, we're going to have some gem fun here in a minute, and uh, I realized yesterday you can use your tiles from yesterday to do the gems today. But uh, I felt like, you know, we should have a pattern today. So here we go. Okay. Marito is uh, like Cadibra in that it starts with a wavy line. And this wavy line can be as deep or as pronounced as you like it to be, you will get a different look no matter what way you do it. And this is the hard, this next step is the hardest part, okay? What we're going to do is create an optical illusion here that, uh, well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is start at the apex of the curve I'm going to go straight out and down. And we're going to create something that looks, well, I guess that's sort of an echo line. So let's call it an echo line, okay? Straight out from the top and then curve down and land on the bottom like this. I never actually thought of it like this because I was going for something different, but this is good. Okay, straight out from the top and echo down to the bottom. All right, happy Mother's Day to me. I figured something out. Okay, can't get it wrong. What's going to happen is that's going to end up making this look like a ribbon. Okay, so the next step is pretty easy. We are going to draw echo lines in the, on the other side. Okay. 
in this fashion. Okay, not too hard. Just one more thing. I'm gonna do another one. We're gonna follow the curve like this. Okay. That's the basic form, all right? So the last step that I normally do, but again, we'll, we'll get to embellishments here in a second, and so you don't have to, is I black with a sparkle. The bottom. And this top part. Look how pretty that is, yeah? So I'm gonna continue and do that all the way around. And I'm gonna show you why this is special to me. Although I have noticed that several of the patterns that we've done recently have been this sort. They're very simple to form. but so many possibilities for decorations. Now you should go to my website, www.thetirelesstangler.com and check out the step out because there are so many embellishments on this and I will probably not remember them all here, but I'll see what I can do. <laughs> All right, that wasn't quite right, but you guys know what I mean. So what's special about this for going around gems or borders, as you will, is that you have the opportunity to embellish in each of these wavy spots, okay? So I, of course, as henna drum, is one of my very favorite tangles. I immediately put a henna drum in the middle of this. Flower flicks. And all of a sudden you have something really pretty, right? And you can see that going around a gym, right? Or one of my favorite ones, I can't remember the name of this one. It's, uh, I don't know. You got me. You know, something like that. Also, nice. Uh, this one was one of my favorites. A little orb tucked in there behind. And of course, if you want to do things on the other end, you can definitely do that. You can hide a partial little orb over here which also makes a cool pattern. Yeah. So you see why this works so well. And even without all of the embellishments, it's a very elegant thing to put around a gem. Okay, so I have a variation for that. Um, and that goes this way instead of the waves. Oh, 
we're going to put points on everything. Okay. And then at the next step, instead of echoing it, I'm going to draw a straight line. Horizontally. Okay. Try to keep them all lined up. And then a curved line. And this idea came from, oh, don't ask me. Okay, so that's your second step. Now you can see why this is going to be a different entity, right? And uh, so now we're going to again do the echo line, but we're going to again come to a point like this. Still the same steps, but something that looks so different, right? And then the last step is to put that last little echo line in. Like this. And then this is one of my favorite things. It really does look like an optical illusion. I can get this rolling right. Looks like a kind of a flat little shelf. See what I mean? Once again, you will not find this at Tangle Patterns. Uh, it is not, according to Linda, a tangle. I, I Maybe because it has a perceived orientation, I'm not sure. But uh, it doesn't really matter. It serves its purpose for me. And that's all I cared about at the time. So like this. And then again, you can put an innumerable number of fills in between these down here. This still works really coolly with orbs. If only I could draw one that was circular. Again, works with flowers. Uh, it works with uh, echo lines. just like we did with Liz's pattern yesterday, which is a fun effect. And that works up here too. So for the purposes of today's demonstration, <laughs> I don't know what shape we're gonna get. We're gonna, we're gonna load it up and see what, it, what comes out. Here we go. <laughs> I was going to tell you it didn't matter. It's about to not matter, guys. I never sweat making the edges of these dark and thick. Not too thick. But um, it just gives a further... Um, it just gives a further emphasis of of uh, deeper edges when you've got a thick dark edge now that's just me again not an artist well 
Yeah, I am an artist. But I'm not a an educated one. How about that? Self-educated. So I might not know everything. So don't take everything that comes out of me as gospel truth. So I'm going to go ahead and put Marito around the edge of this. And I think for this, for something fun, I think I'm going to use the pointy version of this. And so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is put a, a skinny Aura. There are several reasons for that. One, one is separation of uh, visual separation. The other is um, frequently when you do these gems, you get color outside the borderline. And so if you have a little extra room there and you want to black over something or whatever, however you want to handle things, it just gives you a little extra leeway. It's like adding two inches to the hem when you, when you sew, you know, just in case. Just in case the kid's six inches taller than they, they were two weeks ago when you measured them. Because that's how fast they grow. All right. So this is what I'm going to start with. It's not exactly perfect, but yeah, it's okay. All right. So uh, for Marito, we want to make these sort of curvy points. And this is going to be important to turn your tile on so that the design will curve with your um, gem shape. So as you turn it, And you will come to realize that these do not have to be perfect as far as the triangular shapes. They can be as crazy or as subdued as you want them to be. <laughs> Apparently all in the same go. Ooh, I outsmarted myself. So let's do something fun here. like that just for fun okay so now I'm going to put my lined straight out well that was sort of straightish wasn't it and again turning the tile imagining do your best imagining how that goes straight out if you get a little off, it's it's not going to matter. It'll still work. Just turn your tile each time or your surface. And then just curve down to meet the line. It's sort of like an echo line, I guess. Simple, easy, just turn your tile, draw a line, curve down to meet the edge. And this one, we're going to do like, that. okay, I kind of dig it. I dig it. My age is showing in it. All right. So now the second step is to echo the edge of this. Okay. Okay. 
And we're gonna do the same thing here. Just follow the curve of the line. So if you get one out of whack, go with it. You never know, you might find out it's something cool. At least that's what I'm hoping for today. Yeah, I think this is going to look fun. I think I'm going to play to the the misshapen part of this, and that that's going to make it uh, be something unique. And unique is not bad. Now I'm going to leave this uh, without the blacking for now. There are a number of. Uh, ways to vary that to get different effects and so I think I'm going to wait and make that decision here in a bit and so the last step is going to be to draw that last echo line down well Last one. Okay. Kind of fun. Yeah. Now, I can decide to black these as I did in the step out or uh, like this. Oops. <laughs> like this. Or I can leave them blank. And uh, uh, there are a number of things you can do if you did if you wanted to do something different. There are a number of things you can do. You can put little vertical or uh, horizontal lines in, all the way down, straight across, following the top. That's a cool look. Uh, in that case, I would do the lines doing this way too. And you can sparkle these if you wish. Like that. You can also choose to uh, leave these blank and stripe the middle part. So uh, I haven't quite decided what I want to do yet. Uh, but I want to jump from this point. I want to jump to the gym. Okay. We've got our basic framework set out. And I want to leave you guys as imaginations free to fill in some of these places, okay? But uh, let's do the gym. Hi guys, this is Cindy. This is going to be a quick lesson on blending colored pencils and the different ways you can do that and how effective each of them are and what you can, how you can handle different things. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use uh, my Prismacolors. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. It's because they, I have found them to be the, the most highly pigmented pencils I've ever tried. And that includes polychromos. Now, polychromos are great pencils. They are, they are oil based and not wax based. Uh, Prismacolors are wax based pencil, which means that the binding agent that they use to get the pigment, which is the color, uh, to form into a pencil form is wax, okay? And now this has some drawbacks to it, which is why so many uh, people prefer polychromos because you don't have as many of these issues. And the drawback is that as you use these pencils, they create a, a waxy residue 
on the paper and they and that causes them to build the causes the wax to build up and it starts to limit how much of the pencil you can put down and I am just very light bare blah, very lightly putting this down in soft little circles and those of you who use Prismacolors and our fans, you know they go down so buttery soft. And this paper is my Canson Mixed Media Sketch Pad. This is, this is one of the reasons it's my favorite paper. You can see here that it has a lot of tooth, right? All of the little uh, patterns and dots you see in there, that's the tooth of the paper showing through. And you'll find that the more you go over, the same spot with a Prismacolor or the harder you press, which is something you don't want to do if you're going to blend a color. The more of that wax builds up until you have something pretty slick. Now I'm going to change this for the purposes of this demonstration. What can I put with this that won't kill us all? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'll use a violet blue. This will be an interesting, uh, this will be an interesting. So I'm going to come in on top of this, and with the same light little circles, I'm going to layer on some violet blue. Okay. And I probably can still put more of this, but you can see that more and more of those white holes are filling in. Okay, and I can take this and keep working this area around the edges. And this is a perfectly acceptable way to blend colored pencils. Now, uh, I told you guys yesterday in the video that one of the things that everyone needs in their toolkit if you're going to do um, a colored pencil in art is a white Prismacolor, whether you use Polychromos or not, or something else even, uh, white Prismacolors are absolute tops, and this is one of the reasons. People will use them for blending, and they will go over the tops of their uh, blended pieces. And using a fairly firm stroke, what they're doing, this is called burnishing. When the paper will no longer accept any more colored pencil. It is called burnished. Okay. You can see not all, but most of the little white dots are done. And what we've done is we've used this white Prismacolor to uh, force the pigment into the tooth of the paper. So now this is completely smooth over the top or mostly. Okay. So I want to, sh and you can also see that we've lost a lot of our color vibrancy here. You can still go over the top of that a bit, but at this point, it's not going to take that much more color. Okay. So that's one of the drawbacks of using a white Prismacolor to burnish is that uh, it uh, grays out the vibrant colors. Okay, the next thing that you can do, and this is again true of any uh, colored pencil, is you can use a colorless blending, a colorless blending stick uh, pencil, and it can be any brand, it doesn't matter. This has no pigment, no color in it. It's just a hard uh, piece of colorless uh, something that is going to push, again, the pigment down into the tooth of the paper. And this is more effective, somewhat a bit more effective than the white pencil. And if you use this method, you don't have uh, the um, graying out 
that you do. A lot of people that do colored pencil art use these. They are perfectly acceptable. Okay, and that is another way you can do it. I don't know why I drew all of these and I haven't used them yet. Now, let me show you why the, these two are my least favorite methods, okay? Um, I'm going to show you something called Gamsol, which is an odorless mineral solution. And okay. it's like paint thinner, right? And uh, this is just a U.S. brand. And so this is a very small bottle, as you can see, okay? And this is my very favorite way to blend colored pencil. But before we do that, I'm going to get out my uh, Copic alcohol mark blender. This is a clear alcohol marker. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and I'll tell you my secret is... Uh, these these pick up color, by the way, and so you never want to start on your art without pushing that through. And this ran out of Copic stuff a long time ago, and I've been I I put um, regular rubbing alcohol in there, and it works. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why the other two methods are my least favorite. It's because they don't unlock the pigments. And Prismacolors in particular are richly pigmented. And if you use something like alcohol or the odorless mineral solution, which I'll show you here in a minute, you'll find that the colors that you're getting out of your, out of your colored pencils are all of a sudden vibrant and rich because you've gotten rid of whatever medium they have used to bind uh, the pencil together. And so when I do not have any blending solution, this is my at home down and dirty. Now you don't have to have a Copic thing for this. You can uh, go and get um, an alcohol blender, just a cheap off brand one and keep it filled with, with um, uh, rubbing alcohol too. So this is what what you get when you unlock, basically the alcohol or the mineral solutions are breaking down the wax. And so you are able to blend the pigments themselves without having all that wax buildup. And now, that I have done this, I can put more layers of pencil over this and do more blending or more colors or whatever. It it uh, frees up the tooth of the paper to accept more pencil. Yeah? Does that make sense? Sort of, kind of. So, if you get some of this, this is my favorite thing in the world, when I realized what it did for, for my, uh, I got this from a colorist, or this idea from a colorist, and, and turned to find out almost everybody uses it. It wasn't a big deal. But uh, it was a big find for me. Um, here's what I want. And, aha. Uh -huh. Okay. This is a great example. This is one of the most pigmented colors in the Prismacolor line. It's called Indanthrone blue if I said it right. Okay. It is dark going on. It's a dark blue and you're looking at it going, okay, it's not all that big a deal. Calm down, Cindy. And I will be calm in just a minute as soon as you see what's in here. Okay. Now, most people keep their mineral solution in a little jar with some cotton balls and all of that, and that's a lot of work. <laughs> I take one of my big paper stumps, or a tortillon will work, and I just stick it in there. Because I, because I find that the contamination of pigments from dipping in and out is not enough to worry me. I'm not a world-class artist, so look at this now. You see why this excites me? And you can create smooth blends. 
and this stuff evaporates right off both your page and your tortillon. It's kind of incredible, isn't it? My very favorite one is the dioxazine uh, purple one, purple hue. Uh, that's my very favorite pencil in the whole Prismacolor line. Anyway, <laughs> we can talk Prismacolor colors all day. So I just wanted to show you these and uh, one other little tip for you. If you're going to use mineral solutions and you may be able to get the same alcohol effect as this by dipping a tortillon in alcohol, I have not, I don't think I've tried that yet. So uh, we might have to do that before we're done. But this e absorbs and, and evaporates, okay? So now remember this, cross contaminates. So you don't want to uh, have pigment on the end of your of your blending stump and then change colors and then get it all yucky, right? That's my technical term. So what do you do about that? Well, you take a cheap nail file, okay? And you put the part that's all dirty on there. It's just paper. It's not going to hurt your nail file, you know. Wipe this on a towel, on a dirty towel, and you're good to go for more nail, nail filing. It won't hurt anything, okay? This is also the way to take your um, graphite off your tortillons. If they are all slick on the ends and they're not grabbing your graphite anymore, just scrub them on a nail file, and you're golden. And this is a cheap way to do it. And then you don't have to mess with sandpaper. That's my tip for the day. All right. Let's get to those gems. What do you say? So when you're doing gems with colored pencil, the first thing you want to do before you ever lay a uh, pencil to paper is decide where your highlight is going to be. All gems under lights, if you will go to Pinterest, you can find a thousand billion of them. All gems under lights uh, have a highlight and a darkened spot, okay? And so in my case, uh, because it's easier for me not to forget what I'm doing, I tend to put my highlights in the upper right and my darkest portion on the lower left, okay? So uh, I'm taking my white Prismacolor, the very first thing, and even though you can't see really well, what I'm doing. I'm going to put a big white spot and circular spot right in the middle of the place where I want my highlight. And I'm going to want to use a lot of pencil and get a really good thick layer down there of this wax. What will happen, and this is the same with watercolor gems, you want this to act as a resist to the other colors. And if you already have that worked pretty well, then the the encroachment of the other colors will be less. Okay, if that makes sense. Oh, there you can see where the light's shining on it. I've got a good spot there. Okay. Now, uh, for this gem, I think I'm going to do blue because I think I have all of the colors here I need to do. And so for gems, uh, you can do them as you wish. You can go light to dark or dark to light. I like to go light to dark. And then work back and forth between them. Okay. I'm going to be using, uh, just because I don't have the blue I like for light, but I'm going to be using China, which is a pretty medium blue, uh, bright medium blue. I'm going to be using uh, Caribbean Sea which is a sort of a cloudy um, blue, light blue. And I'm going to be using this Indian Throne blue, which you uh, saw here other. That'll be my dark. And I also have an indigo blue, which is what I prefer to use around the edges instead of black to get the really dark uh, depth. Okay, 
So let's get started. So what I do is I start with uh, a light blue or the lightest color and I start that around my uh, highlight and I just pl and I when you're using colored pencils you want to especially in these situations where you do not want lines you want to use a light uh, circular stroke just barely touching it on just just layering a little bit on you want to go ahead and and stroke it on there so you've got a good covering of of color but uh it but you're not pressing onto the paper okay Just keep layering it on. Nice light coating of color. And I want you to go ahead and fill up about, you know, two thirds of the space between the highlight and the light color. Okay. Now I'm going to take my China Blue, which is a lighter uh, shade of medium blue, and I'm going to come in here next to the highlight. Stroke in a little more color over the light blue, and I'm going to do that and really come around in the corners of this, or edges and put a good coat of color around the edges. And I'm going to go ahead and turn around and go up in the edges around the highlight too. Because in the end, this will be a very dark area. Now I do use a sort of straight back and forth stroke uh, when I get uh, to these edge areas because I don't want my pencil going too far out with this color. We're going to use the blending solution to sort of draw it down. But all the way around we want, we want a darkish edge. And that will enhance the the feeling that that it the it's this rounded surface. Okay, now we're going to go ahead. And bring this China blue all the way down here. cover this entire section with this nice pretty bright blue which it doesn't look like much but it will it will okay so we'll have something that looks sort of like this. All right. Now, somewhere in this process we, between the light and the medium, I'm going to take my, if I can find it again, take my uh, paper stump and dip it in bl blending solution and give it a good soak. And then I'm going to start with the edge of the highlighted area, and I'm going to, again, in circular motions, just sort of saturate this whole area with solution. This paper is extremely porous, 
So it is going to require more blending solution than I did on my flat page. Don't, don't be stingy. And you can turn your tortillon or your paper stump to use um, the solution on all sides. I'm giving this middle area with the white pencil a very wide berth right now. I will eventually get to that point. But for now, it's okay the way it is. And I want to focus on this lower, darker side. But uh, before I went too much further, I wanted to sort of unlock my pigments and see where I was at color-wise. Because it's a very different world here once you've unlocked the wax from that, isn't it? Most artists will swear by one pencil brand or another, but uh, this method will work no matter what your pencil brand happens to be, okay? Whether it's Crayola or Crazy Art or something cheap, um, you know, it's all up to you. Okay. Now I'm very, very uh, gently touching this very lightest area here, but I am not trying to get it uh, harshly pigmented or anything. So I'm gonna sort of leave it right here, right now. Okay. I don't want this to be too harsh. Okay, that's our first layer a pencil, all right? So there's nothing wrong with it, but it can be so much more. Mm. So I'm gonna set aside my tortillon and I'm going to do my first run with my Indian Throne Blue, okay? And I'm going to really go in here. Now, the other thing about this blending solution is if you get in there with pencil right after you've used it, the pencil just flows on, flows on. And as you can see, this is a very dark, pretty blue. Now, we're going, going to go around the edge again, like we did with the light, with the China blue. And, uh, then when I'm down here in this area that's going to be dark, I'm going to bring a couple of areas up and I'm really gonna push hard with my pencil here. And this is pretty sharp tip, even though I've used it a bit now. Just for interest, I'm gonna bring some color, darker color in there. It doesn't look like much now, but once I start, uh, once I start blending, it will uh, come into view. And I'm gonna keep uh, putting a good bit of color. I'm pressing medium hard now. I really want this around the edges and I wanna get my opportunity while the blending solution is still on this layer. Makes it, stroking it on really easy. All right, I'm gonna take some out here too. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my uh, paper stump. It's still got a lot of solution on there. And I'm gonna go around the edge here. 
very carefully and you'll notice that I am starting to bleed color into this aura here. And so uh, we'll see what we need to do about that. Clean it up. Probably not much we can do, that's all right. So I'm still working in circular strokes, but I'm not re, re um, submerging my, my paper stump uh, for more blending solution. I've got it fairly well saturated here. And so between what's on the paper stump and what's on the paper, uh, um, I'm getting a pretty good blend. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these areas of interest here as they are pretty much. I don't really want harsh edges on them. I want them to look fairly natural ish. <laughs> we'll see what we get. Yeah, there's lots more that goes into these, but I just thought for Mother's Day, if we had a relaxing time to put some color down on paper and really enjoy the process of making something that's pretty without worrying about all of that extra stuff on how to highlight and all that business. Just put a big white blob in the middle. <laughs> Work around it. Now we're cooking. And by not not uh, saturating my, my paper stump again in blending solution, it doesn't uh, completely dissolve the wax, so I still have some semblance of these extra uh, darker spots without... Um, um, without completely losing them to the to the color blend. So now this is where I am. I've done two runs. So now I really want to because I can <laughs> grab my uh, peacock green pencil. This was from my very first Prismacolor set. Yeah, the little one, the old one. And I want to drag a little bit of green tone in here. I'm going to see how this works together. <laughs> I think it'll work. I could be wrong, though. And if it doesn't, that's all right. We'll figure something out. So let's see where we're at now. Okay, so I want to work that in there, maybe a tiny bit. Maybe a tiny bit up here. And I think it's time we submerged our, our uh, paper, paper stump again. And you'll see it's pretty pigmented on there. I don't know if you can, but uh, let's see what we can do. We want them to blend. Because that's what's going to give us the best color. Okay, so a little... Reminds me of those mood rings from the 70s, yeah. Not that any of you are old enough to know those. Mm -hmm. 
Or they might not have had them where you were. All right, now, uh, I got a little dark for me. So I'm gonna take my medium blue and go in here again and sort of even all of this out. It's going right over the top. Right over the top of all of this mess. And using the blending solution again has allowed us to go over this so many times with this much color. And again, the alcohol markers, they, they do this job as well. They also dissolve the wax or oil or whatever uh, medium they have used on your particular pencil. And uh, let's see. If you have any rough spots where it's sort of like dry and scritchy, then you just need an extra solution. Now, when you come to a point where you feel like, yeah, I'm pretty much done, okay? And this may not be to your taste, and that's okay. You may do yours as you wish. But uh, when you come to this point where you've pretty much done what you want, uh, then I want you to get a fresh or clean a paper stump. Wait, let's use this other one. Use this end. Or a tortillon, tortillons are fine. Depends on what everybody has and I have these and I like these for, for gems because of their larger surface. So get a clean one, okay? Clean the end. Submerge. Okay. Then I want you to start with your highlighted area and don't go too far into color. And around the edges, I just want you to stroke this on. All of the colored areas that came up into your highlight are going to blend into your highlight, hopefully. If you, if the highlight is going to get smaller, that's why we made it as large as we did to begin with. Just take any rough edges off. Okay. A lot of people use black in this step. I, I prefer not to use black. Here's my indigo. Okay, indigo blue. I don't like using black uh, in colored in uh, gems. Uh, a lot of people do. I just think it it uh, detracts from the bright colors. And so a way to to um, get around that is by using a really dark shade of the color scheme you're working with or indigo blue because that's the darkest blue on the blue spectrum. I want to say I don't know. I'm just talking now. And in and in the areas where you really want the depth, which this will, opposite of the highlight is going to be your darkest area, and you want to go in over the color that you've so painstakingly put on and really darken that. A sort of little crescent moon shape. Again, you can use black, but uh, again, I just, on principle, you know, I did all of this color work and now <laughs> we're putting black over it. All right, I'm going to use this end. Blend the indigo in. Okay. 
okay and at the end i'll probably run all the way around the edge with the indigo but you can see not bad now uh, a couple of more things you take your white prismacolor if that is if i uh, here you are i need to sharpen this baby and you're going to go to your middle section start in the middle okay and you're going to very carefully lightly light 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 go around the whole thing now this is it, it will subdue your color just a tiny bit but what this does is it gives the gem that glassy quality that you see in showcases It's all smoothed out and if you need to you can take your clean end of your paper stump and smooth out any of this that got out of control and you want to leave some of this wax intact here at the end because of the glossy finish that it gives this There, no, oh, not so bad. Okay, so this is a basic, uh, a basic gemstone with a little, with two, with a couple of colors coming in there. And again, you can do yours as you wish. Most important part of this is getting your highlight on early, and then you decorate it however you want. Um, the last step with gems has to be the highlight part with your gel pen i recommend really highly that you get the jelly roll tens for this um the the other the other jelly roll the like the eights are really hard to get flowing on gemstones and so crazily the place you want to put this is in the darkest spot okay it's going to be some sort of reflected light and so the number 10s, if she speaks too soon, you want to use as light a touch as possible. Otherwise, they tend to get away from you. And I'm just barely touching the surface of this. Don't push hard with your jelly rolls on top of wax-based pens or any pencils. It will gum up your, your nib and the ink will stop flowing out. So very gently stroke this on top of the colored pencil, okay? Now y'all are probably better at this than me. Once you get it down, try to leave it alone to dry, and if, then if you need to add more, you can. Okay. Something like that. This is not my best thing. So, also, another tip. If you, if you get your jelly roll down and it looks a bit messy like this, and you want to have a nice clean edge, you can take your colorless blender pencil and just sharpen all that right up. Okay right there. See what you learned here today? Now, take your jelly roll again, and if in this aura you want to, and you have little color bits of encroachment, just tap that down a little bit. It will show up in certain light, so you have to keep that in mind. But gently stroke some over. It will detract or distract either way, depending on how well you do, uh, from, from the color there for sure. And again, just stroking it on. Now, I... I'm going to decorate my marito. 
my little munchkin. So, there's my pen. Here we go. What do I want? I think this gem needs the black. So I am going to black starting over here. And I'm going to speed this part up for you. Thank you for spending Mother's Day with me, guys. It meant a lot to me not to be alone today. So thank you for sharing this day with me. And I am going to see you tomorrow for day 35. Crazy. Uh -huh.